What's up, Husker Nation? It is now week eight because we had a bye. So week nine in college football, week eight for the Skurs. Winning record, four and three for the first time since 2019. If you haven't checked out our Northwestern recap, go ahead and give that a look. It's on this YouTube. But let's take a look at Purdue. We're here to talk about Purdue rolling into Lincoln. A lot of headlines already around this game, kind of wondering what Nebraska is going to look like on the field. We're going to have some young guys out there, and it would be an interesting topic to follow to see whether these guys can perform. I mean, we already had some performances out of Malachi Coleman this past week where he had a nice touchdown catch from Harburg. Like I said, I recapped that all in Northwestern. Let's talk about Purdue. Nebraska rolls in four and three to this matchup. Like we said, Purdue's going to come in at two and five, one and three in the conference. It's a team that's still kind of struggling to find who they are after the departure of head coach Jeff Brom was at Louisville and finding success there. They brought in Ryan Walters, and you may have already heard this name because of what he said in his interviews this week, how he played at Colorado. His dad played at Colorado. He bleeds black and gold, and so he grew up with a hatred for the Huskers. Hates everything about us, the red, the net, and on the helmet. Good. Wouldn't have it any other way. I wouldn't want you cheering for Nebraska anyway if you put that color on. So that's fine with me. Like I said, he took over for Jeff Brom. He came from Illinois. He was a defensive coordinator at Illinois, so he's seen a different Nebraska team. He's never seen this Nebraska team, um, but he's a good mind. He's a good football mind. He put together a couple of elite defenses at the University of Illinois. I don't know if any of you remember how good that defense was last year. But it was something. I mean, they were pretty good. A couple first-round picks within that team. And they're struggling this year without them on the defensive side of the ball. And honestly, I don't know if they do much differently or something because we'll look at it. But Purdue manhandled this Illinois team. We should have, but Purdue actually did. So let's take a look at who leads the Purdue Boilermakers on the offensive side of the ball. It's going to be quarterback Hudson Card, the third year tr- it's his fourth year in college, but three years at Texas before he came to Purdue under Walt Walters. Had some success at Texas, but ultimately lost the job to a freshman, Quinn Ewers, who is one of the better players in college football now. And we're going to touch on our Week 9 preview. This is your friendly reminder to listen to the Play the Fight Song podcast. It's going to drop Thursday. Today is Wednesday. It's going to drop Thursday of this week, so make sure you tune into that. Got some good stuff coming, midseason updates, all that stuff. So, anyway, Cards had a good year. He's completing just over 60% of his passes, uh, 1,600 yards, just over that mark, seven touchdowns, five picks. So it is another opportunity, which we'll also touch on on the fumbling side of the ball, but another opportunity for the Blackshirts to create more takeaways. I think we can all agree collectively that Nebraska hasn't done a great job at taking the football away. I mean, we've had some picks and not very big moments. Um, our Most of our turnovers have come over just blatantly bad passes or... I mean, there was one against Illinois, that fumble, I guess you could qualify as a good takeaway. Hat on a ball, ball pops out, Tommy Hill recovers. But outside of that, we really haven't taken the ball away. It's just kind of fallen our way in a do or die situation for another team. So I think the Black Shirts could benefit from taking the ball away from this team. And this is a team that you can do it against. So that's something definitely to mark down. Um, Another thing to mention, I didn't mention about Ryan Walters going back. He's the fourth youngest head coach in P5 football. Can you believe that? I mean, it's a young guy going to come in hungry. Like you said, he hates Nebraska. So this is, I think Nebraska fans know how important this game is and our race to bowl eligibility to get that monkey off our back. And Walters is exactly the type of guy that Nebraska fans want to go through to get there because he hates us. And when people hate us, we tend to just immediately hate them back. So he's running into a brick wall here. We'll see if they can find some success. In the backfield there, led by Devin Mockaby, you might know that name because he's found success against Nebraska before. He's had a decent year, 105 carries, 478 yards, four scores. I mean, it's Purdue running back. They kind of have these shining games, just the University of Purdue in general when it comes to footballs. They've had these games where they stand out and they're dominant and they're good. I mean, example A, Ohio State at home four or five years ago, they just took it to them. In the Iowa, when they're ranked number two in the country, they go into Iowa City and beat them. So they're just due for these big games. I don't think this is one of these games because we're not any highly touted team right now. We're not a very highly touted team right now. Um, but then on the outside, let's look at Purdue, and they have Deion Burks. Deion Burks is wide receiver number one for them. They they target him a lot. 27 receptions this year, five score, 418 yards. 
Card's going to look his way a lot. I think Nebraska on the defensive side of the ball is going to depend a lot upon the offense and how often we can keep them off the field and find success, rhythm, put drives together, 10, 15 play drives, kind of that style Nebraska plays now. That will depend a lot on our success on the defensive side of the ball. But it's definitely a Purdue offense that has the weapons to hurt us if we put our defense on the field too much. I mean, we talked about it in the Northwestern recap. If we keep putting the defense on the field, we are going to burn ourselves. If we start the football game the way we started the football game against Northwestern, we will not find ourselves only down three or six to three. It's not going to be a good scenario, and I think all fans can agree on that. From here on out, I don't think these teams are as faulty on Northwestern on the offensive side of the ball, but Purdue has their holes, and we'll get to them. Um, let's talk about Nebraska on the offensive side of the ball. Nebraska is going to start Harburg. I think he's the go-to guy rule kind of said it this week in his presser, but man, oh man, are we riddled with injuries even worse than we thought. Turner Corcoran out for the year. Ethan Piper out for the year. We are going to have a, maybe not polished, but a brand new left side of the line. Ben Scott will play. He played, he came back and played in the game the other night, but I know people were questioning whether or not he was going to be able to go. He will play. Uh, and then the right side of the line, you'll have new Ellie who's in surgery right now. He's going to be out for a couple weeks. And then Ben Hart, who's probably our most improved player of the year. He's actually been pretty good. So new offensive line look for us. Uh, it's both a happy medium. I think, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, do we, we wanted it, but in this scenario, I think experience would have benefited us. Um, but we'll see how these young guys step up. I'm glad that we have the leadership in the room. I know Rule touched on how good these older guys who are riddled with injuries have been to these younger guys and are going to have to step up and make plays for this team. So we're lucky enough to have that, and we'll see how they respond this week. And we're going to need some big play out of our offensive line to find success in this game. Um, I, hope, I assume Emmett Johnson will get the start again. He's listed at one on the depth chart. Hopefully we'll see more of a balanced attack. I don't think Grant carries last week. We had six carries. Um, but we'll see what happens on that side of the ball. And then the outside, we're going to have some more players. We got Jane Daw starting at the slot for Billy Kemp, who's going to be out for a few weeks with the sprained MCL. And then Malachi Coleman will start again. I think you're going to need even more step up performances from Alex Bullock, who's been pretty good. Uh, we just don't throw the ball very consistently. And that's why our offense finds faults. And that, that is our offense's fault, uh, pretty much for the entire year. And we'll see if we get any Jeff Sims appearances. I know we had a little bit of debate going around social media. Husker fans did on whether or not he should have taken snaps last week. But we'll see what goes on this week behind the uh, behind the center and see if we can get multiple looks from newer quarterbacks. I mean, you're Chubba Purdy. What are you doing, man? You're not in these conversations. You're healthy. They just must not like him in this fit in this at all. Um, let's take a look at the defensive side of the ball for the Boilermakers. They are led on D by Dylan. I'm going to go for it. I think it's Thineman, Thiamin, Thinman. I don't know. He's good, though. True freshman. He has had a heck of a year. 45 solo tackles and three picks from the defensive back position. That's a guy we got to maybe not throw towards. I imagine he'll cover Malachi Coleman or Alex Bullock. I don't think he's a slot. He's not a slot guy. So you'll more see him on the outside. And then Isaiah Nichols, their defensive front is a little confusing. They're not anything that stands out or jumps out on paper, but they have some guys who have made some plays throughout the year. Isaiah Nichols has been really good for them. And then Jenkins and, and Scoutman has been, they've been really good setting the edge. Those are my worries when it comes to our run game and how important that is to our offensive success. They've had, they're near the Big Ten in tackles for loss and sacks when it comes to those two edge guys combined so i uh am genuinely concerned about that but i mean if you if this nebraska team wants to win and nebraska fans know that we have to be able to run the football effectively so we'll see kind of what it comes down to i think with nebraska being four and three and purdue being two and five and the matchup predictor is 51 percent in favor of the huskers and the lines only at one when it opened at four it it makes sense. It, as much as the records don't match up with the percentages and the line, it makes sense. This is going to be a close game. It's a must win for both programs that are looking for bowl eligibility. I think Purdue's in the same spot where they really want a bowl game, and this is a big game for them on their schedule. Um, they have some tough challenges coming up down the stretch that they're probably not going to get the best of, and Nebraska has some questionable ones. 
I think this is the most open the Big Ten has been besides the top of it with Michigan and Ohio State in a while. Everybody beats everybody. I think we take into account too much when it comes to, you know, okay, this Purdue team spanked Illinois. Well, they also got spanked by Wisconsin, who then just had to have a comeback win over Illinois. And that Illinois team beat Maryland, who's had a successful year and had a close game at Ohio State for three and a half quarters. So it's really confusing. I don't think we should look too much into maybe who they've beaten within the conference. It's a very week-to-week NFL-type conference this year, which is fun to follow, but also confusing as can be for diehard fans like you, and I would classify myself as that. So it's hard to follow, but it's a fun conference nonetheless. So let's keep keep looking at the Purdue defensive side of the ball. Um, they f- They're not very good when it comes to defending short, quick passes, but we're not very good at throwing them. I think it's going to be priority number one is Harburg going to be making consistent throws across the field. Uh, There was a great graphic put out by somebody on Reddit. Shout out if by God's grace you're listening to this about his percentages of where he throws the football. Short left, Harburg's best in the country. I mean, dominates that spot. Pretty much everywhere else, it's pretty bad. He gets a lot of balls batted down. He's had eight batted balls this year. Not the best stat in the world to have, right? Um, so we'll have to see if 6-5 can finally figure itself out and maybe open up the the pass game a little bit. Because we'll need to. We'll need to. It's a bad Purdue defense. They, they have holes. They give up 39 points to Fresno State. We'll go through their schedule. But they give up 39 points to Fresno State. They give up a lot of other points in some spots. They give 35 to Syracuse. But we'll go through their schedule. They have holes, and we, we need to expose them, especially with how our offense has been going. Um. They are very similar to us as well when it comes to offensive in- injuries. Their old line is also riddled with injuries. They've lost two guards. Um, so they're going to have some young guys too. It's going to be a lot of freshmen on the field this week. I think Nebraska played nine true freshmen last week and won a football game against a bad Northwestern team. I wouldn't call this a good Purdue team. So hopefully we have a same scenario this week with a different squad on the field. Um, their kicker struggling. Missed four field goals in the last two games. I'm going to go for his last name. Masias, I want to say. Masias. Uh, not good. He's kind of been like Alvano. I think Alvano's picked it up in this back half. He had a good week last week. Nailed that 47-yarder into the wind. But both kicking games are struggling. Weather forecast does not look good. It looks like it's going to be a lot of ground and pound. It's like 40 high of 44 with percentage chances of rain. So it could be a messy Midwest football game. And hopefully it's not as ugly as... Northwestern was for Nebraska, but same result, a win. Uh, the, let's take a look at the Purdue schedule. Uh, they've had some challenges, not any that they've really dominated outside of Illinois, which Nebraska should have dominated that team, as we said. But they lost opening the year at home versus Fresno State 39-35. Then they went and got a win on the road at Vodtech, who is not a good football team. This is not your standard Vodtech team who's on Thursday nights, rocking and playing Notre Dame when they're both undefeated. It is a much different program now, more similar to ours. Uh, then they lose at home against Syracuse, 35-20, to 20, which we mentioned. Lose at home against Wisconsin, 38-17. to 17. And then they beat Illinois at home, 44-19. to 19. And I maybe that's a product of Walter's old spot being there. Maybe they didn't change a lot of their defensive looks and Purdue exposed them. But it, it just that game sticks out in their schedule as it's not even close to remotely what they've done the rest of the year. Then they travel to Kinnick and they beat Iowa 20 to 14 in a very ugly game. Maybe giving up 20 points to Iowa is a good thing for us. Maybe we can get a couple of special team score. It kind of shows that with that bad of an offense, maybe our offense, offense can find success and get to 20 points or more. Um, that I, I see it that way right now. But then again, this is a fan perspective, and maybe that's my fan perspective coming out. And then they lose to Ohio State at home, 41-7. to Ohio State's an elite football team. I mean, you kind of see after they beat Penn State this week, although that was an ugly football game, uh, Ohio State's at the top of the conference again. Then they're coming off a bye. That's another point that we failed to mention this far as Purdue had a bye last week, and God knows how they're going to come out. This is their first bye coming out under head coach Ryan Walters. So it could be a, a scenario like us last week where we come out and turn the ball over two times. It should have been three within the first seven minutes of the game. Or it can be that they're polished. They had a week off. They recovered. I don't know. I think that's a confusing spot. But 
Nebraska with the fandom getting back behind it, kind of smelling that chance at going to a pinstripe bowl or something like that. We've really revitalized as a fan base four and one in the last five, this Nebraska team is so God knows. I think Nebraska can find success in this game. I think they should win it. They can win it, but it comes down to keeping our defense off the field, limiting turnovers or eliminating turnovers. And we'll find success. I think that's just the end of the story. I don't want people to think that we're going to roll in and just piss pound this Purdue team because they're two and five. You got to look more into it and kind of what they experienced. They've been riddled with injury. They fumbled the ball. Guess what Nebraska is? They've been riddled with injury. They've been fumbling the ball. They've had a quarterback battle when Purdue hasn't. So God knows. God only knows. I think it's going to be a close matchup. I think the line's in the right spot at one. Very important for both teams and eligibility. As I said, this is a big one. However, I think Nebraska takes it 23 to 17. This is only Wednesday. So there could be more bad news coming. But I think Nebraska takes this one 23 17. I think maybe even if we turn the ball over once, we'll get one back because this team does turn the ball over a lot as well. Like I said, five interceptions from Card and they put the ball on the the turf a lot i think it's combined between these two schools 32 fumbles only 12 of them have been lost but 32 times the ball's been found on the ground when it's windy rainy cold that's just kind of the things that happen i don't know if anybody out there any husker fans remember back when we played iowa state in like 2009 in lincoln we fumbled the ball nine times i'm not saying that's going to be this please don't overreact and think and get all those negative thoughts rolling in your head because that's what i do but it's got a chance to be for both teams. I think we could see a lot of balls on the turf. Hopefully, Nebraska has less of them and comes out on top. I think they do. 23-17, I have Nebraska winning this game. We'll see how it goes, but we're going to ride it until we die. Go Big Red.